Good afternoon, everybody. We're here at the Rides to the Market uh, car show in Columbia, South Carolina. I'm here with Doug in his badass 59 Dodge. Yeah, 58. 58 Dodge. <laughs> and we're here with Doug in his badass 58 Dodge. <laughs> I grew up in a little neighborhood in Canton, Ohio, uh, way back when, say in the 60s, 50s, 60s. And you know, my neighbor down the street, was uh, he did stock car racing at a 56 VX Special. And I'd go down with there and they'd act like they were actually letting me help, but they did let me paint the numbers on it, which is number 127, which I'll never forget. And then they would take me to the races with them on Saturday night. So that kind of got me hooked. And then they had the midget cars, if you remember what those were, all on a dirt track. And that's how it started from there. The other day, I had a 41 Willys and a rail job sitting in his garage. And I go over to his garage and he'd let me come in and sit in the dragster. And yeah, it just kind of grew from there. It, and then not to mention all the neighbors had Chevelles, Camaros, Montegos, 55 Chevys. Everything was just in the neighborhood. And growing up with that, and my sister had a boyfriend that come up with a brand new 1968 427 red convertible corvette and that point i was totally hooked on cars there was no getting around it and when i finally was able to purchase some which was quite a few years later i kind of went crazy for a while owned a bunch a bunch of muscle cars uh quite a few cruisers uh, mostly muscle cars and i just got to the point where i wanted something that you don't see every day but i wanted it to be fast and dependable so here we are with the 58 coronet <laughs> Well, yeah, this car here I bought in Welford, South Carolina from a little dealer called Garen Auto Sales. I went there looking at a different car and this was sitting there and I just kept looking on it. And then, you know, about three or four times in and out the door, I finally had to go in and purchase the car. We towed it home because put it on trailer, brought it home. I don't want to drive it that far because it was in 1958, but it had less than 10,000 original miles on it. So the car was ran very well. Brought it home here, took it around a few times, went to a couple of local shows. Took it out to dinner, down to get a beer once in a while, but it uh, just wasn't anything I could take anywhere far away. I wouldn't trust it. And I finally ran into Rick Ryan at Ryan's Rod Shop, and I turned it over to him. When I went to have the car done, the brakes went out. That day he was coming to get, I was supposed to drive it to the shop, and I couldn't even take it anywhere because the brakes totally went out. So he came over and picked it up and hauled it off on an enclosed trailer to do the undercarriage and the motor and everything else to it which now has a modern 392 uh, Chevy overdrive tranny, four link suspension in the rear, 392 gear posi, disc brakes, air conditioning, and nice stereo. But the interior is stock, the exterior is stock. The only thing that's not stock is the whole drivetrain. And that makes it drivable to take anywhere you basically want to go in comfort. And it'll get you there pretty quick. It surprises a few people with their muscle cars when you stay up with them or pass them. They're not used to that. <laughs> Neither am I, honestly. <laughs> it's, it's, kind of a, it's a kind of a neat thing. It's just a more enjoyable car, but I did not change the looks. I did add the two antennas on the back. Those are Chevy, sorry. But <laughs> the one single antenna on the front fender had to go. That just kind of fit the car, in my opinion. So I had those installed just for looks, I guess. Then the lake pipe's naturally there just for looks. They're not hooked up. The exhaust comes out the back. Uh, everything else is functional. The hubcaps are 59. <laughs> They're called Lancer hubcaps, Dodge Lancers. And they reproduce them now. They were so popular that people, you know, enough to reproduce them. But it took us a while to find these. We actually found these on eBay that someone had bought and just put away. Because California is where they come from, and if anybody knows, anything from California is sitting out there in the ocean on a boat somewhere, it's not there yet. That's basically all there is to that. Decided to paint the rims red just to give it that little look around there instead of the silver they were. Try to break it up a little bit. And then naturally the wide whites. I didn't think it would look good without whites, so we had to go there. Uh, now you can take it anywhere you want, and you're going to be more than likely the only one there with one of them. You're not going to see too many of them running on the streets. I have never seen one other than this one, but I know they're out there somewhere, maybe in someone's garage, but they're not on the road. And that's just what makes it special to me, is uh, being totally different than everything else. Uh, 
it's just enjoyable. You know? And the looks don't hurt either. Thumbs up. It's kind of neat to have when you're driving down the interstate. And it's usually no offense to the older people going by who remember the car. The young people just look at it like, what is that? <laughs> you know, they have no clue. Including uh, my own grandson, no. <laughs> you got rid of the Chevelle and you got that, and that's it. That's their kind of attitude. But he's never ridden in it, so I might change his mind if he ever gets in the car. Now, I guess the young people went to the tuner cars. Uh, I, I appreciate them. That's not for me, but I appreciate what they do to them. And, you know, but they can they dump a lot of money in those too. So it, it's just an expensive hobby now compared to, used to be you could go to a swap meet, find a part. And now they reproduce everything, but it's a little more expensive now. In fact, a lot more expensive now to, to build a car than it was. Say in the 70s, early 70s. I bought an 1866 Chevelle at an auction for $410. You're not going to do that today. Uh, in, in high school, I had a, a new CUDA my senior year, but I was working a part-time job going to school and I could afford to do that. There's no way they could buy a Challenger in my part-time job nowadays. That's, they're out, you know, the price of them is out there. Working on them is way out there. Uh, best thing is try to find an older vehicle if you know how to work on it. And if you don't know anything about a car, seriously, it's quite expensive to have someone do it for you. That's a lot more money now than it was back when I was growing up. We had friends and everybody knew a mechanic or somebody could do something, and we helped each other out, worked on their cars, whatever. Those days are kind of gone, especially if you don't have the talent or know anybody to help you do it. And you used to be able to buy a book, Chilton's Manual, Motor Manual, tell you how to do stuff. Uh, they don't make that for anything modern. If they do, I don't think you could read it and do it unless you have a computer to operate and I wouldn't be any good at that myself. It's a whole new world. I, I do say get into it though. Don't don't let it shy you, scare you. You know, if it takes you two or three years to build a car, it takes you two or three years. Uh, I've had some cars that I had five years and never got finished, you know, and sold them that way. So you never know what you're gonna do. You know, you, you get there and get started and maybe just say, eh, I really don't want to do that or I'm putting way too much money in this or whatever, but don't ever think the money you put into it right off the bat that you're going to get that back because that is not true. I'm sure you, if you watch the car show, some of those cars are $300,000 or more and they're not, I've seen them at auctions, me come and so forth. And they're bringing a hundred to $165,000. They're not bringing the 300 that they paid to build them. But for them, it's not about the money. It's about, they want that car. They want it their way. And I totally understand that this one here, I would not get what I have in it. I can tell you that right now. But then again, I don't care. It's my car for me. And from and the wife and I enjoy taking it for a cruise. There's nothing better than hopping that and going to get dinner or just go downtown to a cruise in and enjoy ourselves. And that's what it's about for us. And that's really all I got, man. <laughs>